This is Twit. Big, I think the big story of the week was the T-Mobile Sprint merger is mostly okay. I don't say fully uh, full speed ahead. It's not a go yet. But the FCC uh, said, okay. The Department of Justice, U.S. Department of Justice said, okay. Now uh, all that remains is some couple of dozen states, attorneys general, who have been suing to prevent the merger, saying, oh, man, we need four cell phone companies. I, You know, I kind of like what the DOJ did. I feel like, and I would bet that the attorneys general will drop their suits. If not... This is going to really drag out because uh, the trial's not till September. It could even be December because of this new information. They might get a delay, and this could go on and on and on. What we have is one phone company, Sprint, that's just dying, just really s struggling. Another company, T-Mobile, that has, through better marketing, I think, and, and just clever strategy, thanks to their CEO, John Ledger, and, and others, I guess, uh, put together a, a darn fine cell phone company. And I'm a customer. Of course, I'm a customer of all of them. But I like T-Mobile. I think they've done a good job. Sprint recently got backing from Japan SoftBank. That means they at least have some money. T-Mobile's backed by Deutsche Telekom, the big German telecommunications company. But with the merger, they will become... Uh, Pretty much the same size as Verizon, AT and T. You know, within a hair's breadth of each other, we'll have three very big companies. And of course, the problem is when you're small. You know, when you have 10 million customers, you're just doing everything you can to get 11 million customers. When you have 100 million customers, you're just trying to hold on. <laughs> Let's just keep those customers. And I'm quoting here a guy named Charlie Ergen. I have a lot of respect for Charlie Ergen, an interesting fellow who is a big part of this deal. He doesn't work at T-Mobile. He doesn't work at Sprint. He was, for a long time, a professional poker player who uh, was an analyst and uh, for Frito-Lay, counting potato chips. In 1980... <laughs> he actually was a, such a good poker player, he was, and, and Blackjack was... He was banned by some Las Vegas casinos. They said, you can't you can't come here, count our cards. How dare you, Charlie? In other words, a smart guy. And also a go-getter, right? You know, you got to have some uh, ambition to do that. In 1980, he, uh, he left his job at Frito-Lay, the potato chip manufacturer, got together with his buddy, pulled together about $60,000, and uh, his buddy, his buddy, who I've also met, by the way, I've met, I've met both of them, uh, Jim DeFranco, another poker player, by the way. They uh, pooled their money, sixty thousand dollars, and uh, and started a, a business selling the the ten foot satellite, you know, the big satellite dishes, in Denver. This is nineteen eighty. Eventually, he built a company that sold the littler dishes, the you know the hubcap sized dishes, and took on cable TV. Create a little company you might know as Dish, the Dish Network. 12 million customers. He is now worth his $60,000 investment in 1980, now worth $9 billion. $9 billion. So he's done all right. He also owns Echostar, a satellite company. And uh, he has been, over the last decade, collecting something that's very valuable almost as good as poker chips or gold, he's been collecting wireless spectrum frequencies, sometimes to the <laughs> dismay of the Federal Communications Commission and the other carriers because he's not using them. He's sitting on them. He's been a smart like a fox collecting these frequencies. When T-Mobile was told by the Department of Justice, look, this merger is not going to happen unless you somehow do something to create a fourth carrier, you divest yourself of Boost Mobile, your other your other uh, little mobile companies, and and do something to make a big carrier, Metro PCS. So, when that happened, John Ledger, the CEO of T-Mobile, placed a call to Charlie Ergen, the CEO, CEO of Dish, and said, "We should talk." And that's how Dish became. 
a big player in all of this. In fact, the FCC is demanding that they start a fourth cellular company in the United States, and they get it up and running fast. But here's where Charlie was smart. He got all those frequencies, some really juicy ones, didn't do anything, still hasn't done anything with them. He was waiting. He said, why build a, an LTE network or a 4G network when you're just going to have to scrap everything and build a 5G network a few years later? He was waiting for 5G, the next generation of cell phone communications. And, you know, sometimes it's better not to have existing infrastructure to start from scratch. Sometimes you get an advantage doing that. So it's going to be interesting. He will be Dish, the new Dish. And I don't know if they'll call it Dish, but the, I hope they don't because that's a terrible name. It's fine if you have a satellite dish, but it doesn't make any sense for a cell phone carrier. Will be 100% uh, 5G. They're not going to do LTE or 3G or even old style phone service or text. It'll be a self service company in that sense, you know, that you can use your cell phone with it, but it'll all be on the 5G network. He's, this is, he's all in in poker terms. He's pushed his chips to the center of the table and said, because it's going to cost him big, $10 billion at least, to roll out this network. At least. And you know how that is when they say numbers like that. You know, it goes up. Dish will initially use T-Mobile's towers and so forth. That was part of the deal, too. They will um, they'll kind of start off that way. Charlie says Dish can offer on-demand pricing something the cell carriers don't do, charging less in the middle of the night. He's going to target businesses like automakers who are putting cell connections in their cars, right? All the new cars, they have cell connections. They'll have 5G connections. Charlie says, we're going to get someplace in three years that took the other guys 10. I think this is exciting and interesting. And it could, <laughs> Charlie's known, man, this guy's a character. I was, uh, years ago, I did... Uh, he, he has a show on a dish called Charlie Chat. Met the guy, went out to his studio in Denver and did Charlie Chat and was, was impressed by... He's, a, he's what you call a maverick. He's one of those guys... And we are, in a way, blessed. I think we're surrounded by interesting, creative business types. Maybe in the, uh, you know, the robber barons of the turn of the last century, the, the John D. Rockefellers, the Andrew Carnegies are kind of like that. I'm thinking Elon Musk, Jeff Bezos, and now Charlie Ergen. These guys who are willing to risk it all on a crazy idea to do something amazing. You know, Elon's plan, besides, you know, he did Tesla, but he also has SpaceX. He wants to go to Mars, but the thing I think he's doing that's the most interesting is his thing, Starlink. They're going to launch more than 10, I think 12,000 satellites, low Earth orbit satellites, to provide high speed gigabit internet access to every square inch of the planet in five years. Wow. <laughs> that's, the kind of, that's the kind of big thinking I think that could change the world. I think Charlie has something like that in mind, too. Fascinating to watch. You know, and it's his chips he's risking, not ours. Uh, he's, a, he's in a battle with the FCC because um, he bought some FCC uh, licenses in 2015, a big chunk of wireless license. FCC said, we're going to give a big discount to small guys. We want to bring small players into the wireless uh, industry. So he got a $3.3 .3 billion discount. And then they said, hey, wait a minute. Dish isn't a small guy. They later rejected the discount. Now they're in court. Last year, the FCC wrote a letter, according to the Wall Street Journal, that threatened to take back some of Dish's licenses if they don't launch the cellular service by this March. Well, I think maybe they, maybe they will have us. They're going to have something by March, if all goes well. So watch with interest. Charlie's going to pay $1.4 billion for Sprint's customers, the, the Boost Mobile stuff. Or I guess that's the Metro PCS, right? $3.6 billion for the, in three years for the extra airwaves. And, uh, and he's got to start a competitor. Last sentence of the Wall Street Journal article. He says, I think three years from now, this transaction will look better than it does right now. Sprint, T-Mobile, AT&T, Verizon, they're going to have real competition. That's how you got to This is the Wild West. This guy, 
I love it. Kind of rooting for Charlie Ergen in the dish. And you know, it would be good for us if there is a fourth carrier that, like T-Mobile used to be, is kind of aggressive and decides to turn the industry on its ear.